Last episode we took over at West Ham, signed two new players and went unbeaten in our opening two games, but today it is time for us to begin our European adventure. But as ever, if you're enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe and let's get into today's episode. And of course, we will be starting out with your comments. Here are a few tips. If you notice your attacking forward is slow, but put Paqueta at central midfield and then move Bowen to central attacking midfield and sign a fast winger as Bowen only has 77 pace. Give Ben Johnson a chance, as I feel most of your money should go on a good striker. Try to sign someone younger and high potential and quick. And finally, please invest in the Youth Academy, as West Ham produce good talent. Now firstly, as you well know from last episode, due to the absence of a top-tier striker up front, I have had to move Jared Bowen into that central striking position. But that is a very good spot. I didn't realise that he only had 77 pace, including just 79 acceleration, 78 agility, and just 76 sprint speed. Now obviously, just with the likes of the 33-year-old Mikel Alan Antonio and the 31-year-old transfer listed Danny Ings as my two central striking options. The long-term plan is obviously to bring someone in. Now, my initial thought was to move Jared Bowen over to the right-hand side who can potentially then fight with this man, Kudos, for a starting spot. And with Lucas Paqueta being my most creative player alongside James Ward-Prowse, I didn't actually initially think of moving him into central midfield. Now, in the last episode, you will know that I did, in fact, move James Ward-Prowse into that position to take over from Thomas Suchek, and he did play incredibly well in those two games for an overall 7.4 rating in just two Premier League starts. So whilst Lucas Paqueta obviously can play in the centre of the park, if I do end up moving him there, it means I'm either going to have to then move James Ward-Prowse back out of the spot that I've just moved him into, or alternatively then drop the more defence-minded Edson Alvarez. I mean, can you imagine? It means I would have an incredibly exciting and attacking central midfield, but it could also leave us very exposed defensively, so I think I'm just going to have to sit on this one for a minute. Now, with the departure of Kufal at right back last episode, I did decide to bring in this man Milan Van Ewe got right back to, to replace him and with him just being 22 years of age already being 75 rated and having that something special the young Dutchman did come straight into my starting 11 on the right hand side of my defence however don't worry I have not forgot about Ben Johnson he does have a little bit more versatility being able to play both on the right and left hand side of defence and with him only being 23 years of age plus 74 rated and having hopefully some potential to grow and develop I would still like to keep him at the club for the foreseeable future but I've got to make sure depending on how he performs in the opening six months of this season whether or not he is worth extending his contract. And in terms of my youth academy, yes, you are absolutely right. West Ham do in real life have a stellar academy bringing through some serious superstars over the years. And it looks like on this career mode, it is going to be no different. How many players have got an incredibly high potential here in this youth academy? I've just got to make sure that I manage that potential well enough and hopefully give them some opportunities in my first 11 or potentially move them out on loan to try and see if they can get some first opportunities elsewhere. Maybe you need some depth with some young players that can end up in the starting 11 in the future if this career mode goes on for a while. In that case, I would recommend the following. Moritz Sheergaard, in my opinion, he can play central midfield, central attacking midfield and central defensive midfield. Out wide, both as wings and wing backs. A really versatile player. Albert Gronbeck could be a great understudy to Paqueta. Victor Christensen is a good backup centre-back that can end up in the starting 11 at some point. And Tellers Magno, just a good attacking talent, currently in the MLS, looking to prove himself in the bigger leagues. And as for a striker, I could maybe see someone like Solanke looking to play in a European side, just a solid striker, or maybe convert someone like Marcus Edwards for a more mobile striker. Also, this is kind of from left field, but looking to sign Cody Drama from converting him to a central defensive midfielder, if you need that in the future, is a good shout. Once again, loads of different suggestions to get through there. I do really appreciate your comments, so thank you very much. Let's get cracking. Starting off with this man, Moritz Schergaard, just 20 years of age and a central midfielder. Obviously, I do need to still scout him, but with him being six foot four and having high attacking work rate and seemingly having some decent stats overall, especially incredible power shot, ping pass and whip pass, he could be an interesting one to keep an eye on if I get a decent scout report back from him. Now to be fair, bearing in mind I do have quite a decent array of central attacking midfielders, the likes of James Ward-Prowse and of course Lucas Paqueta. I hadn't really considered bringing someone in in that place but look at the physical stats. It seems like this young man has some very good physical and technical stats to boot. So let's see how those two players get on this season and whether or not I might need to look for a long-term replacement for them. Victor Christensen is a man who's done very well for Leicester in real life and with me obviously wanting to try and improve my defence long-term, once again he could be a decent long-term option. And as for this man, Salas Magno, he's got incredible versatility, incredible skill moves and weak foot. Plus he's six foot one and has great high attacking work rates. Once again, he's got fantastic physical stats. And I mentioned before, I am obviously looking for a striker. 
He could well be someone that I want to keep an eye on as the career mode progresses. Dominic Stalanki is a really interesting shout up front. And obviously, I do have quite a lot of attacking shouts to play in that central striking role. And I will get onto them a lot later. But it does seem like Munchen Gladbach in Germany have beat me to the punch. They've managed to secure this man's services from Bournemouth at the moment. So it looks like, unfortunately, right now, I won't be able to bring him to the club in this summer transfer window. And as for Marcus Edwards, not really someone I had considered before. It must be said, especially with the fact that I've now just brought in a left winger in summer. However, with him having links to Tottenham Hotspur, our arch rivals, and obviously presumably wanting to eventually come back to England to apply his trade in the Premier League, once again, he could be a decent option long term for me. You should sign Jonathan David and also sign Calvin Phillips permanently if he plays well this season. So yes, as I said, I have a hell of a lot of attacking options that have been suggested to me. I will get to all of those in a sec, but of course, that man, Jonathan David, of course, would be foolish of me not to place him high up on the list. Now, Calvin Phillips is an interesting one. Obviously, he tried to move to West Ham in real life to resurrect his his career after a couple of barren years at Manchester City but so far with him just being 77 rated he hasn't been able to force his way into my starting 11 yet to make an appearance for West Ham and of course with me deciding to go with a more creative central midfield moving this man James Ward-Prowse into that position plus the fact I've got the more established Thomas Socek as a backup central midfielder in a more defensive capacity Alvin Phillips is going to have to work incredibly hard if he wants to force his way back into my starting 11 but of course if he does and if he does prove to be a very astute player this season then and potentially might be someone that I want to try and snap up at the end of the season. You should consider signing Benjamin Sheshko or Lois Appenda. They were both very good in your RB Leipzig career mode. Keep up the good work. Well, firstly, yes, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. And you are absolutely right. Sheshko and Appenda both were outstanding for me in my last career mode with RB Leipzig. Sheshko chipping in with 29 goals and four assists. And as for Appenda, he stormed up to 21 goals and 10 assists in an incredible campaign for the pair of them. So obviously I know all too well about the potential, especially of this man, Benjamin Sheshko, just 20 years of age and just 77 rated at six foot five and having fantastic physical, mental and technical stats. Long term, he would be a fabulous option for me. And as for this man, Appenda, a man who's been long touted for a move to the Premier League, could a move to West Ham United be a realistic option for the young Belgian? Let's see as the career mode progresses. However, speaking of strikers, with Jared Bowen filling in up front for me at the moment, and with me only having the ageing Mikel Antonio and the injury plague Danny Ings as backup up front, I have made no bones about it that this is a position that I certainly need to improve as quickly as possible. Now, firstly, I want to say thank you very much to absolutely everyone who has commented and left me suggestions about who I should sign. I did ask you four suggestions, and my word, as you can see from this shortlist, they have come in their droves. So many of you want me to buy so many different strikers strikers and they are so many decent suggestions here as you can see however to be honest, I don't really want to make the decision myself. I think this is something because you have made so many decent suggestions that you guys at home watching should be able to make the decision for me. So instead of me going out and potentially buying one of these strikers just off my own back, I am actually going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to put out a couple of different polls on my channel to try and ask you guys which of all of these players you want me to sign. And then depending on which ones end up getting the highest votes, that will be the player who will be joining West Ham Football Club. Now, obviously, this is a bit of a bold move because, as you can see, I only have about a couple of weeks remaining on the transfer window. And with me planning to get through several games of potentially a few months in this episode, it means realistically in this window with the £43 million that I have remaining, I'm not going to be able to bring another striker in to try and improve this squad before the summer transfer window slams shut. Now, bearing in mind we have started the season strongly and unbeaten, including getting a draw against one of our rivals, Chelsea, it is a little bit of a risk for me not to try and bolster this squad right now. However, with the amount of effort effort that all of you guys have put in providing me with all of these different suggestions I do want to give you the opportunity to officially decide which striker it will be to join this club when the transfer window reopens in January and so that means whilst it is a bold move I am going to keep my faith in this man Jared Bowen to try and lead the line for me up front at least for the opening six months of the season yes he hasn't got a goal in his opening two games but hopefully with a little bit more games under his belt and a little bit more time playing in that central striking position he will pick up his form but as always if there are some other strikers whom you would like to see that you haven't already seen on this shortlist let me know down below what you think and of course I will try my best as soon as I possibly can to add them to a couple of different polls on my channel so we can officially decide which one of these strikers will be joining West Ham Football Club in this career mode. As for now though it is time to get back to the football and after starting our Premier League campaign on fire securing an unbeaten start four points and two clean sheets in our opening two games putting us in second place in the Premier League as we move into the second round 
round of the Carabao Cup where we're going to be facing off against Watford at home. We're going to hopefully try and see if we can continue this fine run of form. And with a convincing 3-1 victory, courtesy of goals from James Ward-Prowse, Kudos, and a late one from Kjorne, we continue our unbeaten run. And it's a 1-0 win on our return back to the Premier League, this time away from home against Brighton. But as you can see, the football is interrupted with the arrival of the transfer deadline day as the window slams shut. Now obviously to move to the next level, this team long term definitely needs some improvements across all areas of the pitch. And with me just making two young signings so far, clearly we've still got a long way to go. But as I said, only bringing in those two signings does still leave me with a fairly chunky £43 million budget, which of course we're going to need if we want to bring in a top tier striker come January. So I wouldn't say in our first window it's been an exhilarating start to transfer life under my stewardship, but at the same time with my aim to try and keep this career mode as realistic as possible, it's a window that I'm comfortable with our recruits and I'm actually pretty happy with. And with us getting another victory on the board this time away from home against Luton Town, clearly I have every right to be happy because after our opening four games, yes we have played a game in front of the likes of Liverpool Manchester City, but we do sit top of the Premier League table, just one goal conceded, 10 points on the board, what a start. But it is a start that is about to be well and truly tested as we are about to welcome the reigning Premier League champions Manchester City into town as we're going to be hosting them at the London Stadium in front of our home fans. It's a great opportunity for us to finally test ourselves at the highest level against the absolute very best in English football and this is going to be a real yardstick as to where we actually are in terms of our levels of development so far this season. Let's see what we can do and let's see if we can get an unlikely three points. And with such a fabulous start, it is a return to my usual starting 11. Ariola starts in goal, Van Ewig, Mavropanis, Zuma and Emerson at the back. James Ward-Prowse and Alvarez in midfield. Kudos on the right. Paqueta, Somerville will play in behind Jared Bowen to lead the line. Being chased down frantically and already Haaland has won the ball back in a really dangerous position. O'Reilly into Bernardo Silva. This is going to be a real test of our metal here to see how far this West Ham team have come in the opening few games of this career mode as Alvarez now tries to bring this one clear. He doesn't really have too many options forward. Ends up giving it away. And now Kevin De Bruyne plays it into O'Reilly. Down the left hand side into the channel of this man. Erling Haaland of course the danger man for Manchester City. And now they've got it and once again in a dangerous position. Balde down to the left back. Van Ewig though the new signing with a crunching challenge. Wins it back in a really dangerous position well. But then we can't clear our lines. And we give it away once again. Bernardo Silva into O'Reilly. O'Reilly's blocked off by Zuma but manages to get past him and Ariola with a big save. It's O'Reilly now for City. They take a short corner really quickly and now Bernardo Silva into Zaghini. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Paqueta though brings it forward. It has caught to my mind that Manchester City seem to be playing quite a few young players in this game. Do they have a little bit more confidence here that they're going to be able to come to the London Stadium and collect the three points without some of their big name players? Let's find out. Ruben Diaz for City. Good strength to hold off the challenge. Erling Haaland even better straight to turn it into the path of Kevin De Bruyne. And Haaland gets it back, plays it down the channel into Bernardo Silva. Manchester City carving out a good opportunity. And in the end, it's another big save. The second big save of the game from Ariola once again. Short corner that Bernardo Silva is about to take. City starting to turn the screw in here. Sakini now into the box. Emerson, though, with a brilliant challenge. My left back. What an important one that was. But then he's gone and given it away. We just can't seem to get out of our own half here at the moment. Relentless pressure from Manchester City. Bernardo Silva around two players into Haaland. Straight at the goalkeeper. Emerson. My word, what composure to get away from the challenge of Oscar Bob. Walker now with the throw into Bob. Walker gets it back. Plays it central into Bernardo Silva. City knocking at the door here. Can we try and hold this door firm? Emerson wins it back but gives away a free kick in the process. And of course it's one that the big man, Kevin De Bruyne, is going to take and blaze it over. What a waste. But we will take those ones all day long there. Manchester City had a great opportunity and now they've got an even better one as we've lost it in a dangerous position. They put it wide. Well already I'm turning to Mikel Antonio for some advice here because I don't know what to do at this moment in time. Manchester City are all over the place. Sorry, all over us I should say. We are all over the place in the opening 40 minutes here. We cannot get out of our own half here and if things continue with the amount of opportunities that City are carving us open with, we are not going to be able to hold on. But what a ball that is. Straight through to Somerville on the left hand side. Somerville cuts it back, looks into Paqueta. Balde though gets it clear, only out as far as Alvarez who wins it back into Van Awey. He's got an opportunity to throw it in, looks to the back post for Jared Bowen, it was just over his head. And that was a big chance, our first big chance, but we couldn't take it. Well, aside from the one big chance we had at the very back end of that half, we can count our lucky stars that we are not 
1-0 at least down here in the first 45 minutes of Manchester City have absolutely dominated this game and with them having possession early doors here with Kevin De Bruyne it looks like they're looking to pick up exactly where they left off as Haaland now plays it in looking into the channel of the run of O'Reilly Kurtzuma beats him to it but Haaland wins it back falls to the goalkeeper who just palms it straight into the path of O'Reilly and on the volley puts Manchester City into a 1-0 lead too easy Kurtzuma tried too much too quickly and in the end just should have cleared his lines made it difficult for the keeper who really maybe he could have bombed it into a different place but in the end it fell straight into the path of the Manchester City midfielder and he with ease put it into the back of the net to give them a deserved 1-0 lead Kurtzuma the man who gave it away in a dangerous position has gone and given it away again this time to Oscar Bob and now O'Reilly the goal scorer bursts into the box Alvarez comes across though with a huge challenge if he didn't make that one, it could well have been 2-0. Somerville brings it out now. He's been very quiet so far into Jared Bowen. He finds Lucas Paqueta around the corner into Kudos. And Kudos, has he got the pace to get away from the City defence? No, he doesn't, but he strikes. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful. My word, what power and tenacity on that strike from Kudos. He was about 25 yards out and he absolutely buried it into the bottom left-hand corner. The West Ham fans are ecstatic. Well, Edison cannot believe it from absolutely nothing. We have hit Manchester City on the counter attack. Kudos drove in, realised he didn't have the pace to get away from Ruben Diaz and instead just took it quickly. Maybe he caught Edison off guard, but what a fabulous placed finish. What the Ola is furious, one all. Jared Bowen now has it. Surely the West Ham players have got their tails up here. We know that we can hurt City even though we're not playing at our absolute best. Kudos into Somerville. Somerville turns, looks for a wonderful ball into Emerson. Can he keep it in play? Yes, the left-back can. But tries to play it back, but in the end, Walker's pace just too much for him. Oscar Bob for City into Walker. They will be absolutely livid that they've given this one away, and he's got the beating of Somerville for pace. Of course he does, does the veteran Englishman. Emerson comes across to try and challenge. Doesn't do a good enough job. Does eventually, though. Really good challenge in the end from him. I thought he'd lost it. I thought Walker had managed to get around him, but really good recovery defending an hour and Van Awick, sorry, plays it into Kudos. We've got our heads up now though as we've realised we can break down this stubborn Manchester City defence even if we are not at our best as the right back overlapping on the right hand side. Van Awick cuts it back into the goal scorer Kudos lays it off to Jared Bowen. This is his chance but it puts it high and wide. And we're just over 10 minutes remaining on the clock here. We are going to make a couple of changes including one with that man Calvin Phillips, the former Manchester City man coming on not just to try and resurrect his own career here at West Ham United but hopefully to try and seek some revenge on his former club. Lucas Paqueta wins that one into James Ward-Prowse. Emerson now has it. Turns away from a challenge. Plays it into, of course, that man. Calvin Phillips across to Van Awick. Van Awick, the right back to strike. Drags it wide. Bernardo Silva. Walker. This is anyone's game. It must be said. In this second half, we have had several better opportunities. And it's opportunities that perhaps we should have done a little bit better with. As now Balde's going to bring this one away. Alvarez comes across. Puts in a challenge. But it's not good enough as it falls to the left back now. To try and keep this one in play. And try and see if he can fire a ball over to, of course, the danger man Haaland. Plays it short, though, into another one in Rodri. Balde into Bernardo Silva. Who lines up a shot. Straight at Ariola, makes a bit of a hash of it in the end. My centre back, Mavra Panis, has to head it clear into the path of James Ward Prowse. And he's going to look for the ball over here. Can Mikel Antonio, has he got the beating of uh, Gavardio? He's got the beating of uh, strength. And he's managed to hold the ball up here as the referee blows for full time, much to my frustration. Well, Mikel Antonio had done enough there to win the ball back. And to be honest, I thought we had a really good opportunity to try and score. But the referee thought otherwise, decided to bring an end to what has been a very exciting end-to-end -end game here between the two teams. And one that finishes at full time, a one-all. And as you can see, a one-all draw does in fact extend our unbeaten run. With all the other teams also playing in the Premier League, it means that we do drop down to fifth place, but... We are still within touching distance of the Champions League spots. Clearly with the amount of chances that we did eventually manage to create in that second half, it does go to show that we do still need that final finisher in the box to try and finish them all off. And with Jared Bowen still finding his feet up front, hopefully the January transfer window can come sooner rather than later. However, one area of positivity can certainly come from the top draw displays from this man, Mohamed Kudos. He's my top goal scorer so far this season with three goals to his name in just six appearances. He's got one assist as well, and he's terrorising defences both in the Premier League and the Carabao Cup, just like he's doing in real life as well. And with James Ward-Prowse second on the goal scoring charts with two goals to his name, it's showing that his move to central midfield seems to be working out for him so far. However, I mentioned at the very start of the episode that we are about to embark on our European adventure. And we are about to start right now as we have been drawn in the group stage of the Europa League 
in a group that I think is fairly winnable. We've got Rizzo Spore, Freiburg and Dynamo Kiev, a group that I'm fully expecting to get out of top. West Ham obviously had a fabulous European campaign last season in real life being the winners of the Europa Conference League and that has helped them to hopefully continue their run in the Europa League this season and hopefully we can do something special here in this career mode. And with us starting out in our opening group game against Rizzo Spore, it's a game that I am fully expecting us to win at home and so that is why I have made several changes to my usual starting over and Ariola does keep his place in goal but it's a completely new defence. Johnson on the right, Ogbonna, Aguered and Creswell at the back. Socek comes in with Calvin Phillips in central midfield. Kudos does keep his place on the right as does Paqueta behind the the striker but Corne comes in on the left and Antonio comes in to lead the line up front so here we go then this is a wonderful opportunity for some of my more fringe players to try and see if they can stake a claim in my starting 11 with a good performance here today but uh, at the moment it looks like it's the opposition that are the team who are peppering my goal at the moment as they then go and drag a shot wide well even though we are clear favorites here early doors that was a little bit of a warning sign that we can't take this game too easily here we've got to make sure that we do a professional job and get the job done here as Antonio brings it forward into Corne, lays it into the path of Lucas Paqueta around the corner into Kudos, Kudos to drag it back into Antonio and that is more like it, the Englishman gets on the score sheet for the first time this season for West Ham and what a way to open up your account this season with a lovely celebration to boot well after an early scare we managed to collect our heads and gather our thoughts and our composure and find the back of the net once again it was a lovely cutback this time from Kudos into the bath of Antonio and having an out and out striker in the box clearly shows he was on hand to put it in the back of the net wonderful celebration 1-0 into Kudos Kudos turns it round the corner, plays it into Antonio yet again, and Antonio plays in Socek here. Socek to try and play it across to the left-hand side, loses it though, and can they manage to get there ahead of my defence? Yes, they can, really nicely done, and now Soya can bring it forward into Minchev. Minchev loses it, uh, sorry, you looking, I should say, can't get my words out, for the overlapping run of his fullback. Manages to find Soya yet again, and they are doing a really good job of just bursting down this right-hand side. They throw it in, they've got a corner. Well, this game, despite us taking a 1-0 lead, is proving a little bit more difficult than I initially anticipated. It's thrown into the box, not headed away well enough, though, and in the end, they head it high and wide over the bar. Well, once again, a couple of half chances for the Turkish outfit. We've got to keep our composure here. We've got to make sure that we don't do anything silly, as we are the team that are expected to win here as Paquetar's in. Paquetar to double our lead. Just like that, we have given ourselves the cushion that we so desperately needed. And he's going to copy Antonio's celebration. Round and round in circles he goes. Well, the West Ham fans want to see their team in the ascendancy in Europe. And they really believe that we can do something special in this competition this season. And with goals like that from Lucas Paqueta, I can see no reason why. Fabulous finish. 2-0 into Paqueta. Paqueta around the corner into Kudos now to burst into the box here. Looking for his third. Just blocked off. We've got a corner. Well, do we sense blood here? Do we sense that we could be on for a real route and a real opportunity to bolster our goal-scoring tally here in our opening game in the Europa League? It's headed away. Only out as far as Calvin Phillips. Kudos will take it on. He'll take it on the volley. Big save. Well, feeling confident is the young man after a stellar start to the season as he looked to try and add our third here. He's going to try and see if he can add our third again with a header, but it headed out to Calvin Phillips who knocks it down into the path of Paqueta to throw it back across to the back post. Keeper equal to it at half-time. Mikel Antonio at the start of this second half. Plays it into Corne, into the centre, into Paqueta. Kudos, though, picks it up around the corner. Really nicely done to skip away from the challenge of one of the defenders. Skips away from the challenge of three defenders and throws it into the box. Looking for the head of Paqueta. Just missed him, but it was lovely play once again from the young man who is in fabulous form at the moment. And Socek wins it back in the heart of the midfield. Gives it to the danger man. He tries to line up a strike. Got a little bit ahead of himself. And in the end, John Joe Shelby can get the ball clear, only out as far as Ben Johnson. Paqueta once again into Mikel Antonio. Mikel Antonio into Kudos, surely to add a third. He does, and he says thank you very much in the process. That surely gives us the three points here today. And of course, the man of the moment, Mohamed Kudos, is the man to add the icing on the cake. Well, it was just played into him by Antonio. And of course, from that distance and that angle, that man is not going to miss from there, especially with the form that he is in. Wonderful finish. Another wonderful way to give us a three-goal lead. Antonio once again plays it out to the right back, Ben Johnson. We are well and truly in the ascendancy here. And we think that we can put in a real good performance in front of goal as Kudos has it once again in a dangerous spot. Plays it into Paqueta. That is perfect. It's a wonderful goal. And it's a wonderful way to give us our fourth of the game. And yet again, 
We go round and round in circles we go. Well, we were expected to win here today, but perhaps not expected to win by such a huge margin. Paqueta, look at that with the side of his foot, just looped it over the goalkeeper. That was all precision, no power needed. Look at that for a finish. He knew exactly what he was trying to do, and he found the back of the net with a plomb. Brilliant goal. 4-0. I heard the centre-back out to Ben Johnson. We've still got about 10 minutes remaining on the clock here for us to try and see if we can add to our tally. Somerville, the substitute, wants to get in on the act here. Lovely play into Antonio. It is five, but that was all about the work of the former Leeds man, Somerville. Absolutely beautiful as Antonio gets his second and our fifth of the game. Well, it was the quick feed of Somerville to skip away from a couple of different challenges and the burst of pace and the awareness to cut it back into the path of Antonio. It's a carbon copy of his first goal, but he will have no complaints whatsoever. His second of the game, our fifth, 5-0. Ogbonna, everyone aside from the West Ham goalkeeper now are in the Turkish club's half here as Danny Ings on as a sub tries to bend it around the goalkeeper. Good save in the end though. My word, Danny Ings so close to getting his first goal of the season as Ben Hur brings this one away. We are deep into stoppage time as the referee calls time on the game. Well, the Turkish club are put out of their misery. A miserable game after travelling so far into London. But that man, Mikhail Antonio, was the one who started it all off. A lovely goal at the beginning of the game and an even better one at the back end of the game to help us along to a 5-0 victory in our first game in the Europa League. It's a big win that of course puts us top of the table and that is a place that we are hopefully going to stay. But after such an easy victory against a team that we were expected to beat, we are now about to face off away from home against a team whom we are certainly not expected to beat. It is Anfield, it's Liverpool in our next Premier League game. I need to return to my usual and my unbeaten starting eleven in the Premier League. The only man whom I think will be slightly hard done by will be that man Antonio but as you can see due to the huge amount of fatigue he drops to the bench and is replaced by Jared Bowen up front well there can be no doubt that this is going to be our biggest and hardest game yes we've played Manchester City but that was at home this is a completely different kettle of fish here against Liverpool in front of the cop at Anfield and they are surely going to be our toughest test so far of the season and a real measuring stick as to where we are in terms of our levels of development as McAllister has it on the edge of the box he's been chased down here by Alvarez but plays it into Darwin Nunez what a save and immediately inside the opening five minutes Liverpool are putting the pressure on us and they've got a corner here that Salah's going to take he's going to throw it into the box it's Gravenberch with the head my word Ariola just punches it clear Gomez tries to win it back Luis Diaz has it into the box he fires a strike into the back of the net and within eight minutes Liverpool take the lead well we just seem to have completely cracked under the Liverpool pressure here and in front of the atmosphere here at Anfield it was just too much there were challenges flying in on over the place and it was just too easy for Luis Diaz just to get into the box and there was just too much power on the strike for Ariola into the bottom right hand corner and much to my frustration Liverpool lead 1-0 well shell shocked I think is the only word to describe exactly how we've started this game we seem completely lost at the back here Liverpool pressure absolutely relentless and we've got to make sure that we try and gather our thoughts and regain our composure here as Kudos of course the danger man manages to wriggle away from a challenge and plays it into Van Ewig he's got options in the box here can he cut it back into the path of Jared Bowen yes he can and my word what a way to respond and my word, what a way for that man, Jared Bowen, to get yourself back on track in the goal-scoring charts. He holds his hands to his ears to silence the Anfield crowd here. What a brilliant response from the West Ham players. Of course, it all started from the turn away from Kudos, but Van Awig with the overlap, laid it into the path of Jared Bowen, and that is still a very hard finish on his left. Jurgen Klopp can't believe it, one all. James will prowse into Alvarez. Look at the relentless Liverpool press here. I've got a feeling this is going to be a real ding-dong battle here, but if we can beat the press, we can unlock this stubborn Liverpool defence as Jared Bowen, the goal scorer now, full of beans and full of energy and confidence after that goal. Gives it into Kudos. And my word, what a save from Alisson. But Ketar is going to be the man to take the corner here, and he's going to try and see if he can float it into the edge of the box. Here is Kudos! High and wide, but just over the bar. My word, the fans can't believe it. Gomez being pressured by Paqueta. Both teams trying to press high here. Force the other one into a mistake. But uh, as the press is relentless, it looks like both teams are leaving spaces in behind their midfield and defence that Darwin Nunez now has been the man to uh, make use of. He's managed to try and get past my defence, but he hasn't been able to get past Kurt Zuma. And now Somerville can bring this one away. And the young man surely has the pace. He does have the pace, but has he just taken a little bit too heavy a touch as he has in the analysis and just about managed to get there ahead of him. McAllister being chased down by Paqueta. What a challenge from the Brazilian. 
Alvarez now tried to get round Endo, but the central defensive midfielder was all too aware of it and won the ball back now. Robertson, the left back, to try and bring this one forward back into Endo, into Graven Birch. This time it's James Ward-Prowse with the challenge, but it's Paqueta who wins it back into Jared Bowen. Tries to look around the corner, but Virgil van Dijk was there. He read it really nicely. Now Mo Salah has it. End-to-end -end stuff here at Anfield as both teams look to try and unlock each other's defences here as Graven Birch now has it back into the danger man Mo Salah. Darwin Nunez tries to go one-on-one -on -one with Kurt Zuma. Has he got the guile to go past him? Surely Mohamed Salah does. It's Emerson trying to challenge McAllister. McAllister still has it. Kurt Zuma comes across. And in the end, McAllister just manages to squeeze it past the near post of Areola. Right on the stroke of half-time. We'll look at the celebrations. He knows how much of an important and big goal that was in the grand context of this game. He's managed to just squeeze himself past two of my players. And Areola cannot be beaten from there. My word, that is shocking goalkeeping. The goalkeeper, look at the space that McAllister has got to put in there. And he manages to find a way past Areola. So disappointing, 2-1. Well, frantic is the only word to describe the opening 45 minutes here at Anfield. I've got to take a moment to try and get my breath back here. Liverpool scoring right on the uh, the stroke of half-time here to give themselves the lead heading into the second half. Can we try and see if we can turn this game on its head and claim what will be a huge three points here in the second half? Gravenberg now has it for Liverpool. McAllister looking to try and see if he can double his tally and give Liverpool a two-goal cushion here. Asala plays it into Darwin Nunez. Tries to turn around. Lovely little quiff turn here. He still has it and he strikes from distance this time though. He's straight into the arms of the goalkeeper. It's Emerson the left back to try and bring this one forward. Doesn't have the pace to get away from the Liverpool midfield and in the end goes and gives it away. And now Mo Salah can try and get away from him but Emerson does a good enough job of trying to track back but he hasn't managed to win it. Mo Salah still has it. And Mo Salah with a step over here. Plays it into the path of Darwin Nunez. Across into Luis Diaz. It's all too easy for Liverpool, it's 3-1. Well, Mo Salah won it back in a dangerous position, played it into Nunez, and that was a wonderful ball into the back post. He managed to beat Van Ewig to it, and it's frustrating. The right back, who's been so good in the opening few games of this season, just fell asleep, and it was all too easy for Luis Diaz. 3-1 Liverpool. Well, Liverpool have got a free kick here in a dangerous position. They are well and truly in the ascendancy. They've got their tails up, and they know this is a great opportunity for them to secure the three points, and McAllister in the end with a lot of power, but absolutely no accuracy whatsoever. Look at the speed of that one, but got it all wrong in front of goal. Plays it high and wide. Liverpool with the throw, and to be honest, especially in this second half, it has been all Liverpool. Since that second goal went in, we haven't really been able to find our way back into this game, but is this the opportunity for us to do so here? As if it's going to come from anyone, of course it is going to come from that man, Kudos, who plays it down the channel into James Ward-Prowse, who's going to try and see if he can cut it back, back into Kudos, forces Allison into a save, and it's one that we've got a corner from, and of course it is going to be the set-piece specialist James Ward-Prowse is going to take and he's going to throw it into the box looking for Jared Bowen on the head it falls behind the defenders Jared Bowen has it again oh my word Liverpool sixes and sevens at the back the referee blows his whistle and it's a free kick in the end my word that was a wonderful opportunity it's a bot slide now round the corner into Mo Salah Emerson just hasn't got the uh, stamina to keep up with him Mo Salah bursts into the box Emerson can't do anything about it Jota now on as a substitute Alvarez comes across but Alvarez crunching challenge from Mohamed Salah in the end. Emerson now to bring this one out of defence. Finds Somerville on the left-hand side. Somerville's going to look for the overlap of Emerson. Does manage to find him. Good work down the left-hand side. And we go and give it away. That has been symptomatic of our display so far here in the second half. We've really lost our way. And Liverpool now certainly haven't with Mo Salah. He's got the beating of Kurt Zuma for pace. The Egyptian lovely skill to get away from the Frenchman. Mo Salah into the box. Ends up losing it though. It's Socek now. Into Somerville. Somerville to try and bring it away. Doesn't manage to get past Endo here. Liverpool now play it into McAllister. Into Luis Diaz. Back over to Mo Salah. Mo Salah blocked off though by Zuma. Really good defending from the Frenchman. Somerville to bring it away as the referee blows for full time. Well, just that golf in quality was too much to bear between the two teams as I shake the hand of Jurgen Klopp and look away disappointed. It was frustrating in the end as that man Luis Diaz, his two goals were enough to give Liverpool a two-goal cushion and a 3-1 victory at full time. Well, I knew it was going to be a tough game game and it is a game that ends up ending our unbeaten run 3-1 loss away to Liverpool and it means now we drop to perhaps a more appropriate position in the Premier League drop down to seventh place still got 11 points on the board 
and we are still now just two points behind the team who just beat us, the fourth place Liverpool. The positive to take from the game was of course the return to the goal scoring charts for this man Jared Bowen, he took his goal really nicely in the first half and every single time Mohamed Kudos got forward he did look a danger, evidenced by the fact that he's got four goals and four assists so far in just eight games in this campaign but it is clear to see there is quite a gulf in quality between the two teams and this team is certainly going to need some improvements in all areas of the pitch if we're going to take it to the next level and with us still having £43 million left in the budget once again I put the question to you which of these strikers do you want to see plying their trade in a West Ham shirt in the second half of the season look out for my channel for several polls that are going to come your way you are going to be deciding which man is going to be playing for West Ham but as for today that is that for the episode I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have thank you everyone for your contributions your comments your likes your subscriptions thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time